try this again and I hope you're just joining us as we begin our time of worship here at Central Christian Church. Please know that you are welcome and it's great that we can connect here and even across the miles using technology on Facebook. But uh, chime in and, and let us know that you're watching or like or, or share or follow our video stream because uh, we are just so grateful that we can be the church even at a distance, a church without walls, meeting here across the miles. And uh, please do excuse us. We got a little late start on this video this morning because we started and then we were having some real trouble with connection. So we stopped it and we started it again. So I want to thank especially our son Ezekiel for playing through his prelude twice on the harp this morning. And um, he said he did that especially for mothers on Mother's Day. And in fact, he even has a special piece to close tonight that he's doing and dedicating especially to his mother. But so good to see all of you. And indeed, this is Mother's Day, Sunday, May the 10th, where we recognize in this country and around the world, we recognize the importance of, of mothers and those who are in that role of mother. Indeed, our God is like a father and a mother. So we just give thanks and praise and um, just know that we are so blessed that we can worship together this day with one another. And I'm going to ask if Nikki can start by uh, leading us in uh, a word of prayer, and then we're going to start with a song. Good morning. Let us join our hearts together in prayer. Most gracious and loving God, we come into your presence this morning ever so humbled and grateful that you call us by name and prepare a place for us and love us even when we feel unlovable. God, we ask that you remove all those things that weigh so heavy on our hearts and minds, the distraction, the worries, our fears, our concerns, our grief. Hold these for us, O Lord, and pour your spirit into us so we may hear this story anew and we may feel your spirit blowing through our lives and empowering, encouraging us to be the people that you have created us to be. God, hold us in your love. May you be ever so pleased with our worship this morning. We sing your praises, O God, and we give you thanks for your goodness. All these we ask in your son's name. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to invite my kids to come up forward. And uh, Nikki, I'm going to see if you couldn't just shift that okay. camera just a touch that way is we're going to sing our first song. And we were looking at songs uh, last night for worship. And um, one of the things that 
we we said Nikki, you uh, t- you you help us with the songs. Nikki wanted to choose some songs that she liked for today because this was Mother's Day. So one of the th- songs that Nikki picked that she wanted us to sing as we start worship is called "I Thank You Jesus." So let's sing together. This is one we often sing in our church on Cherry Creek Drive. So a lot of us know the words. Starts off, "I Thank You Jesus." I thank you, Jesus. 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 My Savior God, for you brought me as you brought me through a mighty, a mighty long way. Long way. I thank you, Jesus. 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 My Savior God, for you brought me as you brought me from a mighty, a mighty long way. as well as a a heavenly father. And so we celebrate and we celebrate the mothers this day. And in fact, Nikki has a message for uh, the children today on this Mother's Day Sunday. And so uh, Eden, come up and help out your mom with this message. Come on up, Eden. So I'm gonna have you hold this for us. Mm -hmm. And I brought something with me today. Can you tell everybody out there, what is this? Do you know what this is? It's um, a map. It's a map. That's right. It's a world atlas, right? Mm -hmm. And what would I ever do with a world atlas? Look at places. Look at places, right? And why would you use a map? Do you know why do we use maps? What's a map tell us? A map tells us what where the places are that's right a map kind of tells us where we're going right so like if we're going on a road trip and we need to know where a town is then we can look it up in the map and find out where we need to go and what road will take us there so a map you're right a map tells us where to go right Mm -hmm. well in today's scripture lesson that we're going to talk about Jesus is talking to the disciples and he's telling them that he's going ahead of them and he's going to prepare rooms for them. And the disciples think, where are you going? I don't even understand what you're talking about. And Jesus thought the disciples would understand because they'd been with him for so long. They were his his closest friends. And Jesus said, I'm I'm telling you, I'm going to go ahead of you and I'm going to prepare rooms for you. And they said, but we don't know where we're going. I think in a way they, they thought they needed a map of how to get to where Jesus was saying. And Jesus said, no, you're very confused. There's not a road you take. I'm going out of grace and love to prepare a room for you. And the map, guess who the map is? Him. The map is Jesus. That's right. When we don't know how to, where to go or what to do, 
we can turn to Jesus. So if we're wondering, I wonder if I should be kind to people, we can look to Jesus and Jesus says, yes. Or if we're wondering, I wonder if I should talk to this new person I've never met before. Jesus, we look to Jesus and Jesus says, yes, right? Jesus is the only map we need to get us where we're going. We just look to Jesus and we know that Jesus is with us in our hearts and we know that Jesus is ahead of us, preparing a place for us, so we never have to worry. Isn't that good news? Mm -hmm. So the next time you see a map and we're on a trip, one day we'll get to go on a trip again, we'll get to leave our house and go on a trip again, and whenever we look at maps, we need to remember that a paper map can tell us where to go, but the number one map in our life that we look to is God and Jesus Christ to know where we're going. So can I have a prayer with you? All right. And if you guys out there want to join us, that'd be great. Oh God, we thank you today for the children gathered here and for the children around the world. We thank you that you are always there for us when we are lost and lonely, when we don't know where to turn, oh God. We know we can turn to you. Thank you for always loving us. Bless these children and their families. We love you, God. Amen. Thank you, Eden. You can go have a seat. And thank you guys for joining us today. Amen. Thank you. I'm always glad we can have a message for the children because I know that there's children out there watching. And I want to give thanks for uh, Courtney and Boyd and the group. That, um, we had a group helping out our children this morning with a special worship and wonder time, which is special small group worship for children. So if you're out there and you'd like your children to connect with something like that, uh, check us out, um, uh, message us on our Facebook page, and we'd be happy to help you get connected. But at this time, we lift up the, the prayers of our family and of faith, and we lift up prayers here and, um, and uh, for uh, people that we know and, and people who are listening here and around the world. So I want to lift up a, a list of prayer concerns that are a priority for our church family here in Denver, Colorado. And then we're going to lift up a word of prayer for anybody who's out there listening, anybody who's out there within the sound of my voice. But just to make a mention of a few things, uh, first off, we have a special birthday tomorrow. A member of our church family, a, a super great lady, her name is Jean. She turns 100 years old tomorrow on May the 11th. And so we celebrate and uh, do send a card out to Jean and remember Jean on this special day. How often does somebody turn 100 years old? We're gonna need to continue to send cards and to celebrate uh, this special occasion. Also, dear friend of ours, Bob, who just uh, lost his wife, his birthday is today. And so we do lift up Bob in our prayers and we wish him a, a happy birthday. <coughs> um, also want to make a mention that our church is holding its annual election of, of um, church leaders on May 24th. And so we're required to announce it even in a virtual <laughs> service of worship. We're announcing this this Sunday and the next on May 24th, our election of church leaders. Make a mention of a few others that are on our hearts this day, uh, Rosemary, Linda, Jocelyn, Adelaide, Don, also another Don, Jan, Angela, Elsie, Kathy, so many that are on our hearts. Nikki, did you have any names? My friend Jocelyn. Jocelyn, mm -hmm. okay, we've been praying for her. But uh, we do <coughs> reach out our hearts, and it's so good to be a part of a church family where we can support each other. Well, and I also on this day would like to lift up not just the moms um, out there the, that we so appreciate, but also all the women out there who love other people and reach out in kindness. This is a day to celebrate women and not just moms, but women everywhere. And I wanted to also say a special prayer today for the women um, in the world who struggle and are currently struggling to become a mom. Um, it's not always an easy journey, and I know this day isn't, e isn't easy for everybody. And we can also uh, keep in prayers um, men and others who mm -hmm. are, are in those caregiving roles, and grandparents, and adopted families, and families of choice. But we lift up all of these because we know that it is God's love that makes a family, and God's love that makes a mother. And so we lift up all of these, and even those who've had hard experiences with mothers, we lift these up 
and we, we, we turn it all over to God. So uh, let us pray. Let's turn our hearts to God now and let's lift up a word of prayer together across the miles. And God, we are just calling on your name and we're trusting in you and in your promises and in your son, Jesus Christ, and by his Holy Spirit. God, we just turn everything over to you. God, whatever may be burdening in us or, or bowing us down, God, we trust in you and we trust that you have a plan and a purpose for our lives. God, help us not to, to carry a weight which is too hard. God, help us not to struggle under the burden of a heavy load, but help us to know that your yoke is easy and your burden is light. God, we turn it all over to you. In fact, we surrender all. God, whatever we might be holding on to, whatever we might be carrying with us, God, we uh, turn that over and, and we ask that you help us to turn the page. God, that you help us to, to find a new place to start, whatever we might be dealing with. For God, you are our Heavenly Father and our Heavenly Mother. And we trust in you, whatever deficiencies we might find, whatever regrets or resentments we might have, God, help us just to turn those burdens over to you. God, we pray all this in, in Jesus' name. And God, we have on our hearts uh, so many that we care about, both mentioned and unmentioned. We do lift up this morning Jean, who will be 100 years old. God, what a, a celebration for a church family to, to celebrate with a member that's a, a hundred years old. The worry about economic insecurity. God, the um, people that we are so concerned about are our seniors who are vulnerable. Um, the, the, the decisions of, of the leaders in this country and around the world, those who are, are fighting this uh, coronavirus pandemic on the front lines, our, our doctors and our nurses. God, we lift all of these up to you. God, we know that you are the healer and we know that you have all power and purpose. So God, we call on your name and on your son, Jesus Christ, and by his Holy Spirit, whatever may be facing us, God, whatever circumstances, we know that you are greater than those circumstances. Indeed, we know that we can be more than conquerors through what you've done for us in Jesus Christ. And so what God, we trust in you and we trust in your plan and, and purpose for our lives. God, you will not leave us where you found us. But God, you are guiding us and, and directing us in the way that we should go. God, help us not to um, work so hard, but God, just to turn these things over to you for the outcome. And God, on this Mother's Day, we lift up all that are mothers or in roles of mothers, both in biological families or in, in chosen families. God, we lift up all of those women who are in caregiving roles and all of those women who are not able to have children. And God, we know that this can be a difficult day for so many. For those who've had difficult experiences with mothers, God, we lift all of these concerns up into your care. God, help us to trust in you and help us to know that your love is that of a loving mother. And God, that the best that we know in our mothers is um, only a, a, an imitation of the love that we can find, that perfect love that we can find in you. God, we trust in you and we ask your blessing upon all mothers on this day and all women and all those in caregiving roles on this day that we call Mother's Day. And God, we ask your blessing and we ask and we pray for healing for a hurting world in this time. And we pray even as you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You know, I'm just reminded as we, even as we say that Lord's Prayer and Nikki shares it in a different way than I do and she uses different words. I'm just, I'm reminded that on this Mother's Day, I'm grateful that we are in a church that honors the role of women and that doesn't limit uh, women's roles. And I'm grateful for this opportunity that uh, uh, Nikki and I can um, share this ministry over the miles and even in a different way. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this has been really special. As, as I've often said, this has been special. As, as difficult as it's been, it's been special for our family, for Nikki and me and for our kids to worship from home and to know that we're uh, connecting uh, with our church family here and across the miles. 
But the, the lesson that we have today is the lesson that so many churches are sharing today near and far. We are actually following in the calendar of the traditional church and, and churches here and around the world are sharing these lessons. And our plan is to continue to do that because we feel like that's a place that we can be connected with the larger body of Christ. But this lesson that is prescribed from today is for from John's gospel. And this is the lesson, the gospel lesson for this day in the Christian year, but it may be more familiar from us who have dealt with in seasons of grief. It's a lesson sometimes we hear in funerals, and it's the very red letter words of Jesus. This is Jesus speaking directly to us. This lesson from John's gospel, where he says, Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a dwelling place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you may be also. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God this day. Amen. And this is a lesson, and uh, I, the fact, frankly, I know this lesson so well that because of um, in, in, in pastoral ministry, this is a lesson which is so meaningful to people in seasons of grief and loss. But Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. Because he is going to a place and that we can trust that we can trust that um, there's a place that's also prepared for us. In fact, he says, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. In my father's house are many. And so I interpret that to mean that there is a place. There's a place for, for everybody out there. There's a place for all of those who follow in the way of Jesus Christ. And that means that this world is not our home, but we have an eternal resting place. And this is not something that is just pie in the sky. Oftentimes people will say, well, what does that have to do with me? I believe it has everything to do with me and the way that I live my life today because it gives me perspective on this life. And that way I don't have to take things quite so seriously. That way I don't have to worry because I can trust that God's got this, that God's got me, and that whatever happens, that my uh, status that the outcome is not determined by um, what happens here on this earth, but that in fact the promise is something which goes beyond this life, that in fact we have an eternal destiny. It's very practical. People will say the message of the eternal life is, 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 not, is not practical, or, or why do we make so much of an emphasis? People will scoff at that message. But for me, this is such a practical message because it makes all the difference in how I live my life today. Well, and I think it's also a reminder that um, to live means we're going to die. And it's, um, I know it's not something we really like to think about. I mean, I don't like to think about it. But this reminds me that um, when my heart is sad and I'm missing the people who have gone on. Um, for instance, this last weekend I've been thinking a lot of both my grandmas because I'm leading up to Mother's Day and so you start thinking of course of Mother's Days in the past and as a little girl my home church um, in Ponca City Oklahoma they would recognize moms that had like the youngest baby or the most family members and so my family would try to get as many family members there as possible so that my grandma Jay could always win the most family members present and the Jorgensons there's a truckload of us so it wasn't very hard as long as we could get everyone present and so when these holidays come along it makes me start missing those people a lot of those people that were sitting in those pews with me as a child are now in heaven they're they're no longer on this earth with me and so I like, it gives me comfort where it connects in my life is it gives me comfort thinking of what does their room look like in heaven? Um, in my mind, my grandma has a bunch of, you know, cardinals up there because she loved cardinals. So I picture her room of having a lot of cardinals, you know, or, you know, what would my room look like? 
up in heaven. I, I believe my room would probably be purple and have a lot of brownies. You know, that's what I think of. So this scripture, how it speaks to my heart often is, yes, yes, hopefully I will dwell in that heavenly place one day. But it gives me, I don't know, it touches my heart to think of the people I love that I have lost, um, of where they're dwelling and what their home might look like. You know, I really like that way of thinking about it. That wasn't quite the way I was thinking about <laughs> it, but you know, that's one of the reasons I love having a, a shared ministry and uh, Nikki's and my, both of our perspective and this chance that we're able to do this from home because it does say many dwelling places, many mansions. And you know, it, it kind of reminds me of that joke and I'm not, not, not gonna name a, a denomination, but you know, the newcomer to heaven is walking around and he sees all the different people and then he sees a closed door and he looks in and God says, be real quiet. And he looks in and he sees this group and he says, why do I have to be so quiet? And God says, they think they're the only ones that are here, <laughs> right? And I think that's the, the, the point being that there are many dwelling places, right? That none of us has a priority on uh, the eternal life, right? right? God has, has created <coughs> many different um, movements, many different movements mm -hmm. of people of faith mm -hmm. that we are following in our own way. God, God can speak to us and we can interpret the Bible for ourselves. So um, I think that's encouraging, isn't it? We don't all have I to be the so. same. We don't all have to worship the same. So there's well, a powerful message. We don't all message. have to think the same or be mm -hmm. the same. God created us different on purpose. Mm -hmm. um, God created us with our own likes and beliefs and, and experiences. And even in this moment of we're all in this pandemic together, mm -hmm. but our journeys don't look the same. Mm -hmm. We're not all journeying through this exactly the same. Mm -hmm. You know, for some people, it's kind of a time to refresh and to renew. For some people, it's grief and it's, mm -hmm. it's devastation. You know, it's uncertainty. It's, you know, they're losing loved ones. They can't be with their children in the hospital. I mean, mm -hmm. my heart breaks when I think of the many lives being mm -hmm. affected. So it, the scripture just reminds me that we're not meant to be the same, to be the same. Mm -hmm. God meets us where, and God journeys with us. And I am on that hill that fits who we are and that relationship that we have with God. Well, and, I, and the other point that you're drawing out here on this Mother's Day, you, you, you think of as about grief. And I think it's interesting that the scripture is a scripture that we associate with grief, you know, that we do so often use at funerals and memorial services. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid because you make mention, well, all these traditions, and that was same also over Easter, all of this time and spring in the life of the church. And we think about, you know, there was a lot of grief over Easter. Well, we can't do the egg hunts and we can't do the, you know, the, all the fancy dress. And, you know, here it is Mother's Day, also a big holiday in the church. And we pass out carnations and we, we have a, a show of how many grandchildren and who's the oldest mother and these things. And we're not able to do that right now. Right. So I think it's interesting that there's a scripture that speaks to our grief. It speaks to our grief, but at the same time, it offers hope because mm -hmm. it says, you know, just like you said, you know, a lot of us, if we've lost, if those who've lost their mothers, I'm, I'm fortunate to have my mother and a loving mother, mm -hmm. but those who've lost their mothers, this is a season of grief. It is. And so the scripture is speaking to that grief, but then it's saying there is a hope beyond this life. Well, and I think it starts out, you know, don't let your hearts be troubled, mm -hmm. you know, because God knows that we hurt. I mean, God himself, and I hate I just said God himself. But I, I never would say that. I know, I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> but God knew that pain of losing someone that God loved so much. And God knows our pain. God, being a Christian, being a believer, doesn't mean we don't suffer. It doesn't mean we don't, our hearts don't break. I mean, to love is in time to have your heart broken. I mean, if you love deep enough in time, you will have your heart broken. And I think the scripture says, I see that. I hear that. Don't worry. I've got you. You know, I've got you. I know this is hard. I know it's hard, but I'm going to bring you to a day that is so much better where well, the blessings and, flow. And because, you know, a lot of us, you know, because when we love, that means we're going to lose. You you're know, gonna lose if, at if some you love, point. you're going you're to lose. And so, a lot of us, you know, we we even are are 
hesitant to extend love because we know that we're going to lose. But that's what we've learned, I think, in the, the life of the church. We've learned that um, God's got us. That right. God's got us. You know, we lost a very dear friend, Peggy, you know, in just this past month. And it's been very hard. What a, what a good friend. We talk to her every day. Mm -hmm. But I was just talking with her husband this morning and I said, you know what? I'm, you know, just yesterday I was reminded of something, you know, what she would have said. Right. You know, it's almost like, you know, her spirit is with me. Mm -hmm. And I believe that. Mm -hmm. You know, I believe her spirit is with me and she's looking down on us, as are all the ones who've gone before. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think that's the joy of being a part of a community mm -hmm. of faith, because we do talk about, especially at the communion table, that we are joined together with the saints, mm -hmm. not just of today, but that have gone mm -hmm. on before. I know that I am who I am in part because of the saints that went before me. Well, and you use that language, saints, and again, we have to clarify that this is because of what God has done for us in Jesus Christ, because God has brought us into the family. Right. They're not perfect. No. We're not saying these people are perfect, right? But God has brought us into this family, which extends to all the ones who've gone before, that extends into the future, and that is right here, right now, in the present day. Do we trust it? Do we believe that we're part of something that's larger than we ourselves? Mm -hmm. Well, and I think it comes down to that great mystery, which is so hard for so many of us to fathom, which is grace. Because grace is not a human attribute, you know. And God's grace is so amazing that no matter how many times we mess up or screw up, God doesn't punish us. God loves us and continues to offer that grace. Well, and you know when you say that, how do I know that grace? I, I must say on this Mother's Day, I've known that from my mother, mm -hmm. right? Because, you know, I was not, you know, I, I stumbled and fell. My mother, you know, she picked me up and she, you know, before I even remember. But, you know, I also, I, I, I went, you know, my own way, you know, as a teenager. You know, I, I haven't always been the best son, you know, and my mother, I knew in the love of my mother that grace, mm -hmm. right? That's, that's probably where I first experienced grace, mm -hmm. even before I remembered it. And so on this Mother's Day, we do lift up the image of God as a mother, and what we've learned um, from our own mothers. You know, I was blessed to learn from my own mother a taste of um, what that heavenly father and mother can be like. That's right. Amen. Well, aren't we blessed that we can share in the faith and that we can share and that we have a story that is bigger than just we ourselves, that we can be a part, that God trusts us enough <laughs> to be a part of this story and to carry this message. And even in this, these very unprecedented and difficult times, that God trusts us enough to, and you know, that we're even able to have this experience of worshiping mm -hmm. at home with our families. So we are so blessed. And um, I'm gonna invite my kids to come forward and we're gonna sing another song as we close out that message and as we prepare our hearts for communion. So uh, children come forward and this is the song that again, I said your mother you know, picked out a few things that she liked for this service of worship. and. Um, you know, she says she doesn't necessarily like all the bluegrass kind of stuff that I like. So she picked out some different things. And this is a song that a, a lot of you may know. It's called, Tis a Gift to be Simple. Let's try it like this. Tis a gift to be simple. Tis a gift to be free. Tis a gift to come down where we ought to be. And when we find ourselves in the place just right, twill be in the valley of love and delight. When true simplicity is gained, to bow and to bend, we shan't be ashamed. To turn, turn, will be our delight. Do that again. Tis a gift to be simple, tis a gift to be free, tis a gift to come down where we ought to be. And when we find ourselves in the place just right, twill be in the valley of love and delight. When true simplicity is gained,
Amen. That's a Amen. little different one than how. Amen. I think it's saying. always good to be reminded that it's tis the gift to be simple, tis the gift to be free. Because sometimes I think we get caught in the busyness of life and the excitement to get to the next mountaintop or the next. I think often we come to know God and the simplicity of the everyday. And our scripture today got me to thinking about when I was in Owensboro, I'm not going to do this justice, but when I was in Owensboro, Kentucky, um, a good friend of mine, her son and her nephew were part of a Christian rock band. Um, and we got to go see them play one, son, one weekend. And one of their songs, um, probably the most famous of their songs, and I'm not going to do the, the, song, the song justice, but it's um, My Father's House. And it talks about it's a big, big house with lots and lots of rooms, um, a big, big yard where we can play football. A big, big table a with big, lots big, and lots of food. Yeah, a big, big table with lots and lots of food. And it talks about, you know, this big, big house, that's my father's house. And although I can't repeat the words word for word right now, um, that song, I love the imagery of that song. I feel like it goes so well with the scripture of today that that God, God's got so much love that it doesn't even make sense. It's the great mystery, is, and I love that. I love it's the great mystery. It's the great mystery because in our humanness, it's so hard for us to understand this unending grace and this unending love because we have judgments. I mean, people have hurt me. And I know that there have been times that I've hurt God and I've hurt God's children and you grace. And so as we, whether we feel worthy or not, you are loved, that God has you, that there is a place for you at this table you are worthy of this bread. God's unending grace. So come to the table today, brothers and sisters. Come knowing that you are loved. Come knowing, come knowing that indeed there is a place. Come to the table, brothers and sisters. God. Amen. And, you know, I had this day, uh, the choir has been meeting virtually, and uh, they had put together something, and David, our choir director, had put together some voices that were connected, and we were going to play that today for our communion service. However, I'm having so much trouble with technology. Um, if I was to run another feed, um, then it would mess up our signal. So instead, I've asked my son last behind the communion service today, we'll figure this out that we can share from the choir. But get connected with the choir and the choir and um, going to provide music for our worship. But we do remember that it was on the night, as the scripture teaches us, that and the scripture says, and how he broke it to the disciples. And he said, this is my body broken for you. And then likewise, the scripture, the cup, after supper, it says, he took it and he gave it to the disciples. And he said, this is the cup of the new cup for the forgiveness of sin. Take this as all remembrance of me. As we eat this bread and, and drink this cup, until he comes again. These are the gifts of God. Thanks be to God this day. And so Nikki, I'll say to you, the, the body of Christ broken for you. Christ shed for you. The body of Christ broken for you. And the cup of new life poured out for you. Amen. Eden, for you. And the cup of new life out for you. And now I'll say to you, the bread of life, the, the body of Christ broken for you, the blood of, of Jesus Christ, the cup of new life, the new covenant of joy shed for you. Take and eat, take and drink. Thanks be to God this day and always. And amen. And we have had some trouble. I can see a lot of people are still with us and uh, joining with us in communion. Share with us what you have for communion. Uh, reach out to us. And I know we're all of us sharing communion with different elements at home. 
But we're going to close out with a, a song um, that we're going to... My son is uh, also going to share something he said special for Mother's Day. So hopefully our connection will hold out as we sing this last song and then you can enjoy the, the special presentation on the harp. But we just want to say um, God's blessings on, on everyone and especially to mothers and those in, in mothering roles this day. But we're going to leave off with the song, Uncloudy Day. Oh, they tell me of a home far beyond the skies. Oh, they tell me of a home far away. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an uncloudy day. Oh, the land of cloudless days. Oh, the land of an uncloudy sky. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an uncloudy day. Oh, they tell me of a home where my friends have gone Oh, they tell me of a home far away Where the tree of life is in eternal bloom Sheds its fragrance through the uncloudy day Last time uncloudy Oh, the land of cloudless days Oh, the land of an uncloudy sky Where no storm clouds rise Oh, they tell me of an uncloudy day Amen, and we'll have the benediction as we close And then um, Ezekiel does have a special piece for all the mothers out there So I do hang around for uh, the, the postlude But so great to see all of you Also remember that we have a um, Zoom uh, family fun night tonight at 7 o'clock. So do join us on Zoom for our family fun night. And blessings to all of you. We'll go out on the benediction as we close. And now may the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all through Jesus Christ our Lord this day and always. Amen. Amen.